Welcome to the Advanced Chat Podcast. Joining me today is Mira Laponi from Italy. Yeah. Hi, Mira. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> and sorry, I just want to make sure you're okay with me saying your last name. Um, if not, oh, I'll hit re record yes. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mira Laponi. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Good. Uh, right, yeah. So <laughs> How do I feel? Uh, I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> yes, it's a very dystopian situation right now. So, yeah, you've I don't been, know where to start. <laughs> you've been on, under lockdown for how long now? So, personally, I started with self quarantine uh, at the end of February. So, it's almost a month now. But uh, Italian imposed the lockdown around the 9th of, uh, uh, of March. So, yeah, <laughs> basically, uh, it's very different because uh, when I choose to put myself on lockdown, uh, everything else outside was still working and now nothing is working uh, uh, as it was before. So it's, uh, it's very different. And also the situation is... Uh, I feel like I want to escape now because it's not something I, I choose by myself. It's, uh, it's totally different if I have to stay. Also, the days are passing, so it's, uh, it's more difficult. I consider myself kind of a reclusive person. I love staying home. I really love staying home. But at this point, uh, uh, thinking that I cannot have a walk or just a sip a coffee, outside or just uh, I don't know there, there's a beautiful spring here in Milan right now and I'm seeing and watching everything from my window it's starting to be kind of kind of I don't know kind of sad not to go outside and just have normal and basic stuff <laughs> just like air sun also rain or whatever so yeah it's it's kind of difficult. So the first days are just like, okay, this is funny. I was waiting for something like that all my life. But after some days, you start to experience some more uh, discomfort and inconvenience. Uh, and also you are scared because uh, you are um, listening to all the news from the outside and you're scared because of the virus, you're scared for your loved ones, you are scared uh, for your future because you cannot... Uh, imagine what to do right now because uh, I'm trying to work uh, from home but uh, when are we going to to work again as usual if this is uh, going to happen I don't have a date anymore I mean a date uh, <laughs> just like I don't know where I'm going to start again I don't know tomorrow will be the same as today <laughs> and probably in two weeks uh, the situation will be very similar and so you're, I'm living very much uh, suspended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, for me personally, that's the hardest thing is the not knowing. And, you know, it's kind of like having an extended vacation at first. It's not so bad. And then yeah. you start thinking, okay, this is a little bit longer than I expected. And then uh, this is a lot longer. And then you start seeing things failing and systems failing. And it can be, it can be for sure a very scary time. Um, yeah, also if you're a planner, you want to plan, but you cannot plan at this point. You have to improvise all the time. And uh, actually the situation is worse every day here. So uh, it's not so beautiful <laughs> anymore being stuck at home. It's very difficult also working from home because uh, I'm, I'm with my daughter and Giacomo, which is very beautiful. I think we are going to remember these days. Uh, with uh, We are going to... I mean, uh, we are creating uh, such lovely and incredible memories all together all the time. But working is very difficult to, with a, a baby of two years old, the baby every day around. So uh, we have to work uh, uh, during evening and night at this point if you want to work a little bit. So it's uh, exhausting. I can only imagine. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Um... Good sides and bad sides, I suppose. You know, you have more time with your family um, yes, and, yes. and all of that. And time. also, she is smiling all the time. She is a super happy. And I think I'm very lucky because of this. Because uh, if I feel sad and exhausted, I look at her and I'm just like, okay, 
this will pass. Uh, everything that really matters is with me, Giacomo and Amanda at home. So uh, I still feel very, very lucky because everybody around me uh, are okay. Also my parents uh, and our families uh, and with all these bad news, uh, I think we are very lucky. Excellent. Um, so I wanted to get a little bit into um, how you found Bitcoin and how you currently find the space. Yeah, uh, it was um, a very pragmatic, I don't know how to say, uh, a very um, difficult story to explain, but I, I will try my best uh, to keep it brief. Um, basically, I was doing my PhD at the time, and it was probably around 2012, and Giacomo started talking about Bitcoin, and I perfectly remember the moment. I was sitting on my bed, and... Um, look at Giacomo and told him, mm, this is perfect for you. Quit your job and do that because it is uh, the perfect mix between uh, your passion, uh, politics uh, and also technology, but it, it has also a practical, a practical uh, side. He was very frustrated at the moment uh, with his job. He was a consultant at Accenture and it was Something I said, I was convinced, but uh, I kind of I kind of forget about uh, Bitcoin because I was doing my PhD in musicology, something completely different. I used to be a singer. Uh, um, my job was uh, vocal coaching, uh, it was a very beautiful, beautiful job. But after ten years, I was uh, I was kind of tired, uh, even of that. Uh, but uh, at the moment, uh, I was okay. The, the idea was incredible. I really loved the idea. Uh, I endorsed Giacomo and then uh, completely move on with my life. And uh, then Giacomo asked me to invest uh, some of our savings there. And I was just, we were very poor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a, a very, a very tough de decision, but I really believe in the project. But once again, um, I told him, okay, this is your thing. Then, of course, if you are married at some point, uh, uh, I, started, uh, uh, I started being with Giacomo during uh, Bitcoin meetups. And uh, I went to New York for consensus, uh, probably, probably was around uh, 2014, 2015, I don't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. So I had the occasion, I was there for vacation and also to, to go to the New York La Performance Library. And then uh, I was, uh, I was, like, oh my God, this is very interesting. And also this is history in the making. I want to be part of it. <laughs> I love the concept. I, I, I love the fact that I can really see something like that uh, from uh, the front, uh, the front uh, line. I, I can be part, I want to help. Please, Giacomo, tell me how can I help? So I started helping uh, him uh, in creating the lab that we had in Milan. And uh, at some point, uh, it became my full-time job too, because uh, I mean, I fell in the into the rabbit hole. <laughs> so <laughs> I studied day and night. Uh, we didn't have the baby, so uh, I had many hours <laughs> to to study Bitcoin. And um, I, I, I mean, I I tried to absorb everything around Bitcoin. It totally changed my life. Uh, it felt like an a mission. I really need to help with uh, every of my skills and I had to, to grow other skills to help and so I soon uh, discovered that the community was, uh, was incredible. Incredible people from all over the world. Uh, they, really, mm, they really pushed me in a good way in uh, studying even more, to understand even more every day. Uh, everything is uh, um, is happening very, very fast in the Bitcoin space. So um, you can't stop too much <laughs> because if you stop, you don't understand anything at all anymore. So you have to keep updated all the time. And I remember the first time really in, um, during the first uh, month, uh, I wasn't able even to, to sleep because I was uh, uh, so interested uh, um, in, all the news coming from all over the world, all the time, the worst, uh, 
uh, and everything. Uh, um, I, I slept better with my daughter when my daughter was uh, uh, was a baby than uh, during the first Bitcoin times, if I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, at some point, you get used to. Fair enough. Um, so you were recently at Unconfiscatable and gave a talk. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, uh, if you could tell our listeners and viewers. Yeah, um, so um, I, I have this talk and I really care for the topic because it's uh, basically uh, what can we do for Bitcoin because uh, we know that uh, Bitcoin can do awesome things for us, but uh, um, at the same time, so what we can do, I mean, there are plenty of uh, ideas, plenty of ideas where co we can collaborate uh, with our skills, but uh, what are the best things uh, we can do right now? So I, <laughs> if somebody wants to, uh, to take a look, uh, um, I created this uh, sort of uh, flowchart uh, with all the possibilities uh, if, uh, if you are a dev, if you are not a dev. But since the majority are not devs, I think the, the most interesting part is that one. And basically education is very important. So we have, uh, of course, to educate uh, in every possible way. But uh, from, um, from a point of view, I think there is another thing very, very much important. And, uh, very, very few are doing that right now, that is testing and reviewing Bitcoin tools. So we really need to use those tools. We really need to, uh, the dumber we are, the better it is. We have to give, uh, to give feedbacks all the time to the devs and tell them, I don't understand this, this is not working for me. Uh, you could do this, you could do that. And this can really, really help hyper Bitcoinization and also improving our life. It's something very important and we all need to do that because uh, the more feedbacks we can give, the better it is. And of course, everybody can help uh, with uh, our specific skills. Everybody has a whole set of specific skills that really can help Bitcoin. And it's something I really thought about because uh, my background was completely different. Uh, I have um, a P uh, almost a PhD because I decided to left the PhD. I had to stop my PhD, but probably I'm not going to restart that again. In musicology, I also a degree in linguistics, uh, so completely different field. Um, but uh, I think everybody has a background and uh, that can really help and also can develop new skills for Bitcoin. Uh, but our time is very limited, so uh, we need to, to make choose, uh, uh, choices and choices every time. And I really think there are smarter choices, uh, even for Bitcoin, for example, uh, before this coronavirus, <laughs> I decided to, to spend uh, less time on Twitter. Mm, I really love being on Twitter, it's one of my favorites, favorite things on Earth. But many people were there, uh, shit posting all the time and doing a good propaganda for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin uh, didn't, uh, doesn't need my contribution that much as in the past, probably because we were few people all over the world. But right now there are other people that can really help Bitcoin in that way. Uh, so I decided to focus more, for example, in working uh, in other ways, so testing, etc. Also, um, and of course, my time is limited. I have a company, and so I have to work for my company because I need to, I need to eat at the end of the day. So uh, it's very important how we distribute uh, our, our time, even for Bitcoin in that part. That was mainly the idea of my, of my talk. Awesome. I think that's really important because a lot of people um, around the world are interested in, <clears throat> pardon me, interested in getting into Bitcoin, but they don't, uh, they don't really know where to start. And if they're not a developer, it doesn't seem obvious. So that's awesome. I will um, make sure that that is linked in the comments below. What was the title of your talk if people are looking at Unconfiscatable? Uh, what can we do for Bitcoin? What can we do for Bitcoin? <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah. You may have already said that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that um, I was reflecting on what you said. Yes, right now it's very difficult to understand where to start uh, with Bitcoin, uh, but um, there are 
plenty of good places to start. It wasn't like that in the past. Uh, for example, I really find very useful uh, two types of uh, uh, material. One is the side that aggregates all the Bitcoin resources and sources. For example, the GG1 or Jensen Lock One is an incredible starting point uh, for everyone. It's uh, Wow, it's even too much to even look at that, but uh, since uh, everyone has a different background and different uh, goals, uh, probably even for Bitcoin, they can uh, look and start uh, from the part they prefer. And also the other one is just start with a very basic uh, um, level, but for example, my favorite one is the, the uh, La Moneta Bitcoin, I translated in Italian, uh, is the Bitcoin money book. Uh, um, that one is incredible in my experience. Uh, uh, the target uh, are the kids, but it's perfect uh, for adults, even more for them, uh, because it's, it's explain uh, very easily why we need Bitcoin, what does it mean in a practical way. And uh, also in my experience, if you convince uh, uh, people that uh, we really need Bitcoin and why is mm, behind Bitcoin. It's, uh, it's the best way. It's easier than to talk about all the tech behind. I personally really love the tech behind Bitcoin. It's something that really fascinates me, but uh, it can be a barrier for someone because uh, it seems like a different language or even worse because at some point a different language you can understand something. But with Bitcoin you are I don't know, you You can be um, really, really scared and, and you can think it's because of, I don't have competence or Bitcoin is uh, something stupid. You can decide what's your excuse. But uh, uh, if you start very easily, uh, in a very easy, this doesn't mean that it's not a, that um, the book or the resources are easy or simple at all at all. They are only conveying very difficult stuff in a very effective way. So if you start like that, people will start to think about it and then probably come back again, maybe weeks later, maybe a month later. And think about it, what happened to me in the past. Uh, after probably some years, I wasn't so involved in into Bitcoin, but I had this thing, this Bitcoin thing, already in my head so this is what i'm trying to do also with the people around me with my friends and loved ones at the beginning they they are not so interested but i'm starting to see that days after days they want to learn more not everyone there are no coiners they are totally okay with fiat money and that's uh, and that's good there but uh, many are asking more questions um especially about uh, freedom, about rights, about the fact that uh, uh, they are surprised uh, that, um, uh, I mean, me too, I never thought about money so much. I use money. Uh, I get money, I save money, but I never thought about money. And many of the people I know are just thinking about money for the first time. And when they think about it, are very surprised because they, oh my God, I don't know nothing about i want to know more maybe somebody is trying to uh to do bad stuff <laughs> and i don't know how can i prevent that uh, so let's just start like that and then uh, grow over time that that's my experience so far so <laughs> very cool um yeah I, I think that's one of the things that i encounter when talking to people about bitcoin as well is it's a it's a new concept. I mean, we've been kind of told for many years, like, just trust us and just trust us is, you know, proven time and time again to be a, usually a really bad idea, um, regardless of the good intentions behind that may have once been there. Um, so when you talk about Bitcoin and how it's actually a valuable, scarce asset, um, still new, but, you know, it's, it's different than money almost in a way. It's something that actually confers real value. Um, and that can be difficult to, you know, to wrap your head around if you're new to the space and um you know you don't see anything wrong with the the current system um, yeah yeah and also i mean uh, it's um it can start a sort of a cognitive uh, dissonance process uh, maybe you can understand what is bitcoin but uh, you can start saying i don't need bitcoin 
I can understand it works like that, but I don't need Bitcoin. I don't care about Bitcoin. Uh, it's not so easy that um, being humble and honest uh, with ourselves too. So <laughs> there are so many things are going on. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things you mentioned uh, was, uh, well, I, I guess we were talking about it earlier. One of the things that I'd like to dig into is how you're surviving while maintaining personal liberty and why that's important. Oh, well, you mean, sorry, because I didn't hear. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Um, so I wanted to ask sort of why you're like, so with the, the current situation that you're in, how you're oh, okay, surviving okay. while maintaining personal liberty um, and then also your experience and how the situation could have been handled better um, with okay. the, the current pandemic right now. So um, right now, um, <laughs> I feel just like I don't have the majority of my human rights anymore because I cannot move from home. I cannot, uh, um, I cannot travel. So basically all my movements uh, rights uh, and also that my privacy rights are kind of violated right now. And the things that I am doing is just uh, helping people Preventing that probably, I don't know how to prevent that, but being ready for that because we didn't have the time. Uh, the, situation, the situation happened so fast and so quickly, we didn't have the time to think about a strategy. And so we are locked down here. We cannot uh, escape without giant consequences. But uh, I really think that other people can, um, can really, I mean, leverage in a good way our situation. That's, uh, uh, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Um, also, I have to say that um, I'm very, I'm very surprised because people um, in Italy are not uh, seeing all those uh, rights uh, limited. Probably it's because they are scared because of the fear, but they are, they really want uh, stricter measures, uh, and uh, they think that this is only an emergency and it, this is only temporary, but I don't think so. Once you, are, you have imposed something and you have a precedent, uh, you are not going to, uh, to come back to the previous situation so easily. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really concerned and worried about the future because uh, I don't know what will happen. Uh, so this is what I'm trying to do. Please <laughs> be aware, be ready. We cannot do, something uh, not so obvious right now, but Bitcoiners are people, they're working with adversarial thinking and uh, crazy stuff all the time. So we will figure out the best strategy. But of course, one thing that I'm saying, I'm telling people right now, don't underestimate it that you have internet now because this is not something you should take for granted. And so you, can, you should start thinking about uh, uh, put some mesh network or do some screenshots. If there's something you really care about, uh, don't keep everything on cloud uh, on using the internet uh, because uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I, I really hope I'm wrong, but the internet is something that we don't have to take for granted at this point at all. Uh, things that could have done better. Uh, yes, many, uh, plenty. Uh, of course, it's easy to say now uh, because uh, I know, but uh, the point is, uh, in my opinion, uh, there are three giant responsibility uh, of our authorities. Uh, the first one is underestimating the situation at the point to not order the, the equipment. Uh, I mean, uh, even if something uh, won't happen, you are only ordering ordered some uh, mask uh, or some equipment. Uh, um, so believe in China completely, not a good idea, apparently. And so that was the first error. The second one was a very small criteria for testing. Uh, so we had our first patient only uh, around the middle of uh, February, but it was circulating since weeks, of course, because the criteria for testing were only for people in contact with people coming back from one. And of course, that poor guy didn't have any contact, uh, but he was, uh, he was dying uh, from uh, COVID at the time. And he met only uh, a great doctor that really took the responsibility to test him and it changed the history for Italy. But uh, we are talking about individual action. And um, 
I think that uh, I was circulating even before February, if I have to say. So at that point, you discover that. Uh, and if you want to impose a lockdown, uh, you should impose, impose a lockdown at that moment and uh, kind of straight and not later, because probably they are doing... Uh, I'm not an expert. I am only trying to read many papers and many stuff. We are not even sure about uh, a lockdown because we don't know anything about this virus too. Uh, so for example, now today there are going to be shared the numbers of uh, uh, Lombardy in my area and the numbers are increasing. Again, I know there is a giant lag between, uh, I think those are the, the people con um, that have been in contact with the virus probably at the beginning of March but uh, the numbers are still very high. So probably this means the lockdown is not uh, the best solution, who knows? So we are guinea pigs in this situation, uh, but uh, I think that a strict lockdown could have done better at the beginning, uh, just uh, as the same for the first towns in Italy, they, they had a very strict lockdown and it kind of worked. And um, this is situation in the middle, uh, violating all of our rights uh, is uh, one of the worst uh, because we cannot, uh, we cannot even work anymore. I, I can work, but uh, it's, it's damaging our, our, our society, our economy very much. So it's, it's very sad what, what it's happening. I have a closing working in uh, ICU here and the situation is dramatic so i think it's very important to slow down the numbers and the entrance inside the icus um, but flattening the curve is something we can only think about in theory and the reality is different than our that our calculation so i'm not an expert but i will say that um, i would have preferred people um not so <laughs> Um, not so underqualified. You cannot be so qualified for a new pandemic, I know. But uh, uh, for example, doctor are telling uh, now in Italy, we should have been more prepared. A pandemic is something we should uh, have um, learned and handled better if we have studied and prepared before. So there are many responsibilities. And the last one I want to say is that um, about uh, the government after the first cases in Italy, uh, many authorities told us uh, just to live our life and uh, the majority of the spread of the virus happened during that week. So um, don't trust the authorities so much. I know it's, it's scary. The majority of people want to believe someone, but uh, we don't have choice. Uh, we have to think uh, with our mind, with our had and trying the best for ourselves. So I, I listened to myself and I told my parents uh, to self-quarantine at that time. And they listened to me because, and I'm very, very happy because they are old, they are in their eighties. And I have to say that it's more than one month that they are alone and I feel so good that they are protected at home and nothing eventually would happen to them because they, only my father come out home sometime for my mother's drugs and for some food, but uh, the rest of the time they are close at home and safe. And many other people weren't so lucky to have someone uh, telling them what was going on. Or at least I wasn't sure about what was going on, but to me at that moment, it was the most reasonable thing to do. Stay quiet there and if they just a wax or something just like a flu, stay at home for two weeks and then come back and live your life. It wasn't such a giant sacrifice, if you think in perspective. But many people, but many people believe the authorities. Of course, the um, Italian uh, healthy uh, services were telling people, just live your life, don't damage the economy. And of course, they believe that. Yeah, that's... It's definitely one of the, I think one of the tragedies in this is uh, wow. people being underprepared and then almost course correcting and being overprepared. And, you yeah. know, I think this is really an unprecedented thing that we're all going through. Um, I don't think anyone is, you know, alive that remembers the Spanish flu, but uh, this is the first time we've had a, a real pandemic that we're, we're dealing with. And for sure it's, it's, you know, 
it's virulent and um, the actual numbers, it's tough to say because I think you can only really properly assess after the fact once you know all the data and all the data's come in. Right now, a lot of it's just conjecture and I think some of that is feeding the panic at the same time. We need to be careful like, you know, are we over panicking or are we, yeah, I don't know. But I definitely agree with you that the- I, I, I don't know, my mind is not clear at the moment. The, um, I have many doubts and I have uh, very few certainties, uh, but I prefer to stay in the middle. And, uh, and right now I'm, I'm more concerned about uh, um, the rights of the people that um, from the virus, because the virus, uh, uh, it's, I mean, at some point uh, uh, we could handle, eventually, I really hope, handle the virus better than in this moment. But uh, the consequences of what is happening now, we are going to pay for them uh, for years to come. And many people are going to suffer. We, I, don't, I really, really hope I'm uh, overreacting even in that, but I don't see many uh, positive outcomes of this, this situation. Yeah, that is one of the toughest part is we're making, you know, in making these snap decisions in order to handle and uh, make sure that people are, are safe, um, there are definitely long-term consequences. And I mean, I know that that always goes into decision-making, you know, do you solve the immediate problem um, and kind of let the eventual uh, issues work themselves out? Or do you, you know, do you focus on the long-term? Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> everybody is, um, is thinking and acting uh, uh, with a very low time preference at this moment. Uh, no, sorry, with a high preference. But uh, I think it's very important to think also about the low time preference because uh, I don't know, fear can uh, can can really can be really tough on our minds, uh, and uh, uh, we we only want to get out of this situation. And also during the next month, I think everybody will be very happy to be finally. Uh, living the life as usual but uh, after some months uh, um, we are going to discover that all this fake money printed <laughs> in infinite uh, uh, ways um, are not such a good idea they are not patch that you uh, put there and you can forget about not our feed money is not uh, um, it's not worthy uh, as much as in the past. It's worthy probably less, half or more. I, I don't know. So we are all poorer than before, of course. And every crisis, in every crisis, there are opportunities, of course. So uh, I really hope that there are going to be many silver linings too. But uh, it's on ourselves to discover our personal and uh, roles and also as a societies um if i have to say um because people right now are telling me you are very very tragic please uh, you are sharing terror but of course i'm in this situation so i'm living inside the terror but i have to say that i'm um, i'm starting to see a lot of silver linings too for example people are starting to use technology in italy for work and are starting to use for homeschooling uh, and also to connect a class of kids uh, and also it's uh, plenty of uh, incredible uh, volunteers uh, that are helping the elderly. I wasn't expecting such a high numbers of people helping each other. And uh, so it's, it's very beautiful how we can connect and help even in this situation or even more. Uh, people inside the hospitals are doing an incredible job. Um, I know many of them and uh, they don't stop. So... I have to say that there are plenty of uh, incredible things uh, that we are experiencing right now. We can keep uh, uh, those uh, after all. There are some. Uh, there are plenty of hope for our future too. But uh, um, let's see what happens. I don't know. But uh, on the bright side, there are bright side, of course. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see Italians uh, so connected, uh, so um, so ready for technology. They are doing Zoom meeting all the time uh, with the families. Uh, they are organizing incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, schools are 
are still uh, still running in these ways uh, and so it's it's very it's very beautiful I agree. It's been really cool seeing all of the the creative uh, ways that people are, are handling things. And, you know, whether that's um, online, whether that's a, a deep dive into creativity, I'm really liking seeing, uh, I haven't actually had the time because <laughs> I've been busy recording. Um, but I like the fact that there's all of these online concerts that bands are putting on now. Um, and, you know, you've got a kind of an online festival, you've got online learning, as you were talking about. Um, one of the things I did want to plug is we, um, so I just wrapped a recording with IBM talking about their Call for Code program. Uh, so they have a, uh, it's a third year running. It's a $200,000 prize hackathon and it's all around uh, disaster awareness and remediation. So they were focusing on climate change this year and they, re, uh, they pivoted early and they have an additional track for COVID-19. Um, so they are now uh, encouraging people to participate. It's currently up on our, our site. It's the featured podcast. Um, so yeah, it's something I'm actually considering signing up for. Um, I don't know what I would do, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to see if there's a team that could, could use my services. Um, but I, I think that, you know, seeing companies and seeing people band together, you know, we are much more resilient than we uh, we yeah. give ourselves credit for them. and having Absolutely. to be kind of kept in line, you know, by an authority. I really think that that's the thinking of the past. And I think going forward, um, I really hope that uh, we start seeing our, our strength and start seeing how we can contribute and how we can create a, a better society. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, also, I have to to add another thing uh, very beautiful: the three D print uh, um, ventilator created in Italy to help the patients or other incredible um, ideas there are um, there are just like um, spreading around more than the virus I really hope uh, that we, we put our skills all together once again we can create uh, uh, something uh, uh, something good something great and uh, if we still have internet, <laughs> everything <laughs> will be better and fine. And uh, also, we have time. This uh, this is an incredible, uh, an incredible uh, situation to to read the dead books uh, that uh, we really want to to read. Uh, to really think about uh, those uh, projects. Uh, to we can have a, a special time if we can use it in, in the right way. It can produce uh, incredible results too. So. <laughs> Yeah, I 100% yeah, agree. 100 agree. Um, oh, I'm getting uh, some uh, feedback now. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm newer to Zoom. Um, that That's fine. Yeah, one thing I did want to touch on uh, before we close is the mesh networks and, you know, not taking the internet for granted because I agree, we very much live our lives online, you know, whether it's through social media for the last decade um, or however long. And, you know, we've got a whole generation that's growing up um, not knowing a time other than having internet and being always on yeah. and always ever <laughs> present. Um, so it is kind of nice that we can unplug a little bit. Um, yeah, we're still connected online, but I think it's important that... You're right that we don't take these systems for granted and if there's only one internet i mean if anything happens to that you know how do we communicate so i think seeing people do some really cool things in mesh networking um, i know blockstream has their satellite project yeah. uh, elon musk also has a, a new uh, earthlink system that i think he's put out or something like that i actually don't know too much about it but i recall reading um yeah i think the more that we start looking at uh, creating resiliency in all of our systems. Uh, I think that that's a, that's a good thing we should be looking to do. And also I have to add that it's very important to unplug from the internet from time to time too. <laughs> because especially right now, because uh, after so many days uh, with all these news and uncertainties, you, uh, we're, I started to experience, uh, um, I mean, I, I, um, I feel all these uh, uh, things uh, uh, that really are blocking me in some way. Uh, there are too much to handle. And, and I'm thinking about people that are not so lucky to have a family around or people that uh, uh, probably um, are, are weaker than that. How uh, they are experiencing this, uh, probably they are very, very alone. And of course, it's very important uh, to understand that uh, if you are plugged for 24 hours a day, you're going to pay a high toll at some point. Uh, it's too much. 
it's too much. You're stuck at home with uncertainties and bad news all the time. It's really important you just read a book. Uh, today, for example, I colored a book. Uh, um, so something like that. I use pencil, something very practical and manual. It really help uh, the relaxing me. And uh, or, or cooking, for example, I, I, do, I usually don't cook so much, but I'm cooking. Uh, so things like that can, can really can really help or limit the time you are exposed to the news because of course it's very important to be updated with everything going on it's super super important to understand what the next steps uh, will be for example but uh, at some point you are only rereading the same stuff uh, all over again so not so useful anymore <laughs> yep i hear you yeah no it's um I think it's good. One of the other things that's happening is there's a lot of uh, fitness groups online and kind of fitness challenges. Uh, so it's cool to see these, you know, working out at home and there's still lots you can do. Uh, I think I'm, I'm still able to go for a run. I'm not sure how long that'll last, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, my gym's closed. Uh, even my, my building gym is closed. It's been closed for about a week and a half now. Um, so I've had to be creative about, you know, working out. Um, but I think that that's really important for, you know, if that's something that you're kind of thinking about as part of like a new year's resolution, it doesn't have to stop. And there's a lot of support online as well. So. Yeah. 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 It's very, it's very beautiful because uh, right now you, if you have um, something that you love, you will find someone that it's given uh, free resources uh, right now. So uh, I love to do my, my workout from home, but uh, I have to say that um, right now, I uh, haven't done even a single workout because my mind is still very much focused on everything that is going on. But uh, uh, my goal is to do some sports from home because it's very healthy and it's beautiful. We cannot do sports outside, uh, but at least uh, we can do something at home. So I'll do that for sure. I need some endorphins going on. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to, to speak Thank with me you. and be on the podcast. Yes. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I had a great time too. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.